I'm an eight figure real estate investor and had 87 doors by the time I was 23. And in this video, I'll be showing you how I analyze rental properties today. So if you guys wanna have a pen and a paper in front of you so we can make my time and your time more efficient, I'll be showing you step-by-step -step exactly how I analyze numbers on a rental property. Now, before we begin, here are some important key pieces of terminology for you guys to know. It should pop on the screen right now. So as you guys can see, there's some stuff like scheduled gross income, net operating income, debt service, operating expenses, uh, expense ratio, and cash flow. And I thought the best idea for me to share what those concepts are and how to use them in analyzing a rental property is to share an actual deal that I did many years ago. And you guys can follow along and analyzing what the numbers were and how much I actually ended up making from that deal. In fact, here are some photos of that eight unit apartment building I bought years back. Now on a side note, I actually ended up buying this building with absolutely no money down but that's a video for another day scheduled gross income is rent you've scheduled to collect based on your current leases so for example for this eight unit building we managed to secure leases on all the units for $950 per unit after stabilization now stabilization was not part of the terminology that you guys saw in the beginning of the video but what it pretty much is is the process of getting all the units ready and leased out now the process for stabilization for this eight unit property was an absolute nightmare i mean in fact when i first took a look at this place with my property manager we had hot water heaters that burst and it flooded some of the lower units it was four units up top four units on the bottom we had three squatters in there which i live in illinois and this deal was in illinois and unfortunately we have a lot of laws that for some reason protect criminals and squatters but there's three squatters there i mean there was an absolute mess now i don't have any before photos but it looked a little something like this Now, thankfully, we've been able to put a lot of work. In fact, we raised, I think, $150,000 to do the rehab and, you know, get all the units ready and leased out. But thankfully, the tenants that we put on there after it got stabilized all paid on time in full. That's actually what leads us to our effective gross income, which, by the way, there's two different types of gross income. You're going to have effective gross income, and then you're also going to have scheduled gross income so scheduled gross income is the money that based on the leases you're scheduled to collect so if you have an eight unit building and each unit is renting out for a thousand dollars that's eight thousand dollars a month seventy two thousand dollars for the year however your effective gross income is the money that you actually collect by the end of the year so thankfully again because our tenants that we put in there after stabilization all paid on time and in full our effective gross income and our scheduled gross income were the exact same number so in fact with eight units we rented each unit up for 950 dollars and doing the math right if you guys want to follow along with me we have eight times 950 that is seven thousand six hundred dollars per month now obviously the Romans, for some reason, decided that there were going to be 12 months in a year. So we go ahead and multiply that number by 12, and that's going to give us $91,200. And that's what our scheduled and our effective gross income was in the first year after we stabilized the building. Now, I'm sure a lot of you guys are going to ask this question, Daniel, how long did it take you to get everything done? It actually took us a full 18 months to take care of all the issues that we had with the property. Some we had to gut the units, unfortunately, uh, because there was flooding as well. We had to bring in humidifiers and replace all the flooring and whatnot. So it was a bit of a long and expensive process. But year one, we were able to collect $91,200. Now, that being said, obviously, we don't take that full $91,200 hundred dollars home we have these things called operating expenses which are expenses that you're going to incur as you operate the building now some of the most common and most expensive operating expenses that you're going to encounter as a landlord and as a real estate investor are stuff like taxes which for me as an Illinois resident is absolutely brutal. Some of the investment properties that I've had in my career were 15, 18% of gross income going towards taxes. Because again, I don't know why I'm still here actually. Oh, look Homer, the IRS. Maybe you guys can tell me where I should move to, right? But we have taxes. We also have insurance. We have stuff like utilities, maintenance. And for those of you guys that are not interested in managing the property for yourself and 
you know, taking calls at 3 a.m. because the toilet's broken, you're also going to pay a management fee. And management fees are typically structured in uh, relation to the income. So it's going to be a percentage of what that gross income is going to be. Most property managers are going to charge somewhere between that 6 to 12% of your total gross income. My manager charged me 8% for this particular deal. So outside of management fees, you're gonna have little things here and there like you know travel, you're gonna have stuff like legal fees. Now, if you have a really good CPA or a very good tax professional that prepares your taxes, uh, the tax form for reporting your income and expenses for your rental properties, it's either gonna be what's called a Schedule E or a Form 8825. Just depends on how you hold the asset. If it's in a partnership, if you have it in a trust, et cetera, et cetera. But for the most part, when it comes to your operational expenses, your big three, as I like to call it, is typically gonna be the maintenance, the utilities, and the biggest one usually are the taxes. Because how else? are the Ukrainians gonna get their money. Now, calculating all these numbers is what's gonna lead us to what we call the expense ratio, which the expense ratio is the percentage of your gross income that's going towards your expenses, hence the name expense ratio. Now, fun fact, the average expense ratio for a rental property in the United States last year was 47.3%, which is true because most rental properties that I analyze are usually going to be between that 40 to 60 range. It's usually going to be about half of your total gross income. And in our case, our expense ratio was actually a little lower at 45%, which means that our net operating income, which is the income that you collect after all operational expenses have been paid was actually, if you do the math, so $91,200 multiplied by 0.55. Now, the reason why I'm gonna multiply by 0.55 is because 45% of our gross income went to expenses, which means 55% actually went towards our net income. So I'm gonna go ahead and take that $91,200 and multiply it by 0.55, which gives us $50,160 as our net operating income. Now, that being said, we're not done quite yet. We have this thing called debt service, which at the end of the day is the mortgage payment that we make to our lender. So just like how, you know, maybe you or your parents or anybody, if you're living in a house that has a 30 year mortgage attached to it, you're going to make that mortgage payment every single month. Well, same thing here with investment properties. And in this case, our mortgage payment was actually to the seller because with this deal, we bought it on seller financing, which for those of you guys that don't know, seller financing is a deal in which the seller carries the note and provides the financing versus a traditional bank like most people would do. Now, there's a lot of pros and cons when it comes to seller financing, mostly pros. In fact, we have a free three hour course on seller financing on how to find them, how to negotiate for it, what it even is, the pros and cons and how to structure it. I'll leave that in the description for you guys to check out. Now, that being said, here were the terms that we bought this deal on. So if you guys don't have already, uh, download Carl's Mortgage Calculator, K-A-R-L apostrophe S Mortgage Calculator. Now, I'm not an affiliate. I'm not financially tied. I don't make money by having you guys download the app or anything like that. It's just an app that I've used for over a decade now uh, for my real estate investing properties. And so if you follow along, there's this, a little section called property value, and uh, which is actually the purchase price. And we bought this building at $250,000. Now, a lot of you guys, especially for those of you that live in California, probably fainted because you're like, holy cow, $250,000 for an eight unit apartment building, like our shed cost $2 million, right? Uh, well, and that's because that when we met the seller, he was actually a very highly distressed and motivated seller. Now, his life wasn't in distress. He had like a private jet. He was very well off. He was a very rich dude and pretty much bought this eight unit building in the 80s for tax purposes. And because he was getting so much trouble with the tenants and now the city was calling him to go to court because he wasn't really taking care of this building at all because he had way too much money outside of this deal, he was willing to sell it to us for what he bought it for in the 80s, which was $250,000. And we solved his problem by going to court on his behalf as the new owners and taking care of 
all the mess that this apartment building had associated with. So our mortgage payment, as you guys see with all the terms, right? So property value of $250,000, 0% down payment, 4% interest, 20 year amortization. As you guys can see in your calculator, our payment ended up being $1,514.95 per month. Now, if we annualize that number, so we take that 1514.95, we multiply it by 12, our annual mortgage payment is $18,179.40. Sense, right? So that is what we call our annual debt service is what we owe to our lender uh, at the end of the year, or in this case scenario, every single quarter, because we're making that $1,514.95 payment to our seller every single month. Now, this leads us to calculating our cash flow. Now, cash flow is the money that you take home after all operating expenses and debt service has been paid. So in this case, what we have to do is we have to take our NOI because that's the number that we have after all operating expenses have been paid, which was $50,160, right? That's our net operating income. And then we have to subtract our annual debt service from that number, which is $18,179.40. So we just do the math there, right? Subtract once. 50,160 minus 18,179.40. And that should give you a cash flow of $31,980.60. And boom, that's the number that we took home every single year uh, by being owners of this eight unit property. Now, funny enough, this was actually my very first multifamily apartment deal. Up until this point, my brother Sam and I would buy a lot of single family rentals and portfolio single family rentals. And this was my very first multifamily apartment deal. And there were a lot of ups and downs, especially in the stabilization process, but obviously bringing home $32,000 a year in passive income through real estate cash flow was definitely worth it in the end and i did a lot more deals like this to have 87 doors and be a real estate millionaire by the time i was 23 years old so if you guys want to see the full journey of how i did exactly that go ahead and click on this video that you guys see here in the end screen and until next time i'll see you guys in the next one